And we don't think we can hide anymore in the shadows and say, the bad guys and the good guys, it's you guys. It's the human race that now is at stake. And so we want to make it so easily clear with science before we leave this planet ourselves that the next generation will not have to endure, even in medical school, the kind of propaganda that makes bad doctors and failure in healthcare. 93% of people who are medically treated for cancer will die from cancer. I didn't make that fact up. They tell us that. They tell you that type 2 diabetes is a disease. It's not a disease. Never has it been a disease. Never is it a disease. It's a lifestyle choice. They tell you that certain things are chronic. Oh, you have irritable bowel syndrome, which, by the way, in great part is skyrocketing because of genetically modified food consumption today. Get rid of the genetically modified food, do what we say, there's no such thing as irritable bowel syndrome. ADD, a young man comes to me a few minutes ago and says, I have ADD, it's bullshit. There's no such disease as attention deficit disorder. It's a confused mind with lots of sugar running around, lack of values, lack of moving where you're heading, and that's what happens. You get goofy. And of course, they have to diagnose it. Restless leg syndrome, what the hell is that? <laughs> well, no weed plus disease. Quit eating the crap, and you won't regurgitate. That's it. You know, you just have to remember people. You've been conned. And you've been asking for it. Not only have you been caught, but you said, give me more. I didn't get enough. And even when your life is threatened, you're unwilling to give up the fantasy. This is what your cells made of. It's extraordinary. If you really study it out, you know, I always believed there was a God, but didn't understand it. Because the religious training I had taught me to respect a God without the knowledge of a God. When I studied the immune system and the way the body functions in biochemistry, I became a true believer that this universe or universes have an infinite message about it. And if we respect these things and start to develop, look at that cell up there. And you have a hundred trillion of these cells. Can you imagine that? So any of you that feel poor, just remember you're a trillionaire, forget a billionaire. There's not a trillion here on Earth, but you're one of them now. And you walk around and say, well, I don't have one trillion, I have a hundred trillion. And that hundred trillion, once they get a little weak and once they get a little tired, guess what? They die and new ones come in. And so you always have the hundred trillion. Wouldn't that be nice if you kept spending money and your bank account never went down? <laughs> but our bank accounts go down. You know why? Because we aren't strong enough to replace the cells. So this is why we age prematurely. So if your body's bone marrow is not creating the vast majority of stem cells that become any cell in your body, so if you need a brain, if you need a heart, if you need a bone, it becomes that. If you're not strong enough to produce that, you start degradating. And it used to be we degradated 100 years ago in Ireland at 100 years old, and it was very common people live to 100 years old. And the pharmaceuticals try to even lie to you about that. We live longer than we've ever lived. If that's not stupidity, I don't know what stupidity is. Look around in this room. If we went back 50 years ago, you wouldn't see this room filled with people with cancer because it was almost non-existent. Type 2 diabetes was virtually not a disease 100 years ago. There was not a disease called HIV, not a disease called auto reflux, all of this nonsense we talked about, ADD. They create, fabricate, and make drugs for diseases so they perpetuate their own corporate interests. That's what happens. This is a virus. And the virus is attacking the membrane in the cell there. Can you imagine that your body has to put up with this? Even those of us that are as healthy as can be. I just got off a plane from Birmingham. Now, Birmingham's not the cleanest city, so I'm sure it was quite dirty in that. <laughs> Come on, you Irish man. <laughs> I know they oppressed us for years, but nobody's been. <laughs> so my body's fighting as I'm sitting here speaking to a room full of people my body's fighting the viruses that I picked up on that plane 
Look at that anatomy, how it works. And you know that, that it is perfect, that we see how perfect it is. We have the sickest people in the world come to us, and we watch them get well when they gain self-respect. And so I'm absolutely convinced nobody will ever change my mind. You could put me in a gigging team. You can tell me you're going to shoot me. I will not change my story on this one. I know anyone is capable of healing himself. It's the will to live, the passion to do what it takes, the purposeful life. What am I here for? What's my contribution? These are the real questions. And nobody asks those questions. The doctor says, do you have insurance? <laughs> That's about it. How good is the insurance? Can you pay on your own? If you can pay on your own, you get better care. And by the way, they did some studies here in Europe that looked at the, the free pay care. Actually, there's a higher mortality rate for that. So if you don't have money, God bless you. <laughs> Digestion ultimately occurs in the cell. Now, that immune system is going to be affected if you don't digest nutrients. Now, let me give you something real simple. I've said this here in the past, but it may have gone over most of your heads, because I saw you walked out of here and ate crap after I talked. Do you remember if I said to you, if I put you in a closet here, inside of the hotel, and we threw the key away, and we let you stay in there without food, we just gave you water for six months, and we opened the door, what would we find? A corpse, you'd be dead. That's because you die of malnourishment. Now, where is the stretch of the imagination that if you're not nourishing your body, you are dying of malnourishment. Maybe a little bit of spuds and a little bit of soda bread is giving you enough sugar so you sort of sustain life a little bit until you die of some disease, but you're slowly but surely dying. And you're not rebuilding those cells that we talked about. And your immune system cannot function if it's not nourished. How many of you had an army, the best army in the world, that decided not to feed them for a month? How good would that army be? How good would the immune system be if you cut off all the good things. And it's not only food. The top food is oxygen. The second top food is water. Are you drinking pristine water? Are you drinking this water on Ireland's beautiful land that's absolutely filled with chemicals, pharmaceuticals, plastics? Most of the bottled water you're drinking has all of the above, I just said. Today, more than 95% of all chronic disease is caused by food choice toxic food ingredients, nutritional deficiency, and a lack of physical exercise. Now, by the way, that's the number that's true. Your government agrees with 80%. Because I've sat with your government. I sat with the parliament here about 10, 15 years ago. And that was really one of the most fun meetings I've ever had in all the years I've done this. Because you had two women in there, by the way, and I won't name any names. One had healed herself in this way of a disease. And then you have the pubsters there, as they call them. Big heavy guys who can hardly sit in the chair, you know, sitting behind this, uncomfortable. Well, who's this lad? What the hell is he not talking about now? And I was really proud of the Irish women at that time. Because one perked up. They wanted to send me out in 10 minutes out of that room. But one perked up and said, what Dr. Clem is proposing, and what I did propose, is that Ireland became the country in Europe that stood as the health country that stood as the organic country, that stood as the country that protected the rights of the Irish citizens for natural health care, rather than join the EU evil empire that is chipping away. Two days ago, I spoke at a major can cancer conference in Exeter in England. Do you know they have a new law there now that you cannot speak about anything but chemotherapy and radiation? It's against the law, and that's going to come to your neighborhood very, very soon. because. The public is becoming a little upset. And the smart ones are seeing that these treatments are killing, banging, and hurting more than, by the way, helping. And so the more there's going to be outcry from the public in every country of the world that you want natural health care, you're going to see a battle go on that they're going to lose, by the way, because there's much, many, much more of us than there are them. But at this point, you're in those early days of Rome falling. And Rome is not the public. Rome is the evil empire. More notable chemicals. Look at what they're putting 
into food here. Strawberry flavoring used in Bellshade contained 50 different chemicals. So when you go out to the local fast food place, and say, oh, well, I'd like a strawberry milkshake. Number one, you shouldn't take the milkshake to begin with. If you want a strawberry one, besides the milk that gives you cancer, diabetes, heart disease, contributes to viral diseases, and the list goes on and on and on, you're literally going to get 50 extra chemicals from that. Now, what laws protect you from this? None. Why would they permit any rational government anywhere in the world permit a corporation to put deadly chemicals, cancer-causing chemicals, into food. A government that's controlled by corporate interests. That's what government. And which government doesn't do that? I, don't, I haven't found one yet. Just, it's not who's bad, it's how bad they are anymore. They're all bad. That woman, when you see grocery store products for what they really are, you're gonna change. Now, I used to run through those grocery stores with my mom when I was a kid. You know, in America, there are these gigantic grocery stores. They, they keep some of them open 24 hours a day. Because real fat people like I used to be, in the middle of the night, you get hungry, you just go to the grocery store. They make it really easy to kill yourself, believe yourself. You have those here yet, 24 hour stores? Yeah. And before you know it, remember we used to close everything on Sunday? Money. Money. And look at what we find in there. A friend of mine, many years ago, a physicist, brought me into a grocery store. I said, well, I do go to the grocery stores. I know what's here. He said, you don't. He said, you run for water and maybe organic produce. What the hell do you know? And so he had a list of the 10 most famous foods sold in the United States, selling millions and millions and millions of these products every single day. And he's had me look at it because my interest and understanding was different than his. And in seven of the ten most popular products sold in my country, not unlike your country, it basically said that they had deadly cancer-causing chemicals. And sad news is three out of the ten had the chemicals had no purpose to be in the food. There was no justification of those particular cancer-causing chemicals. They weren't stabilizers, they weren't dyes, and they weren't preservatives. And the other Four, by the way, may not have had a purpose, but at least I could see where they could talk their way around that. By the way, every major food industry in the world today, multinational food industry, intentionally put drugs into your food. And I would love any of you, because we're going to have questions and answers to challenge anything I say today. And who would ever like to debate and lose, I challenge you to do that. Because it's called hyper palatability. Write it down, look it up. And I didn't learn this from Harry the hippie doctor from California. I learned this from the former head of the Food and Drug Administration of the United States, who finally woke up and joined the human race. And he said to me, do you realize that every single chemist that works for these, their full-time job is to find synthetic opiates, ways they manipulate chemicals to become opiate. That drug, opiates, by the way, are heroin. Oxycodone, Oxycontin, these are opiates, or synthetic opiates. And why would they put those into the products that you eat? Because you now have a lifelong customer. And this is new. It used to be they just relied on our addiction to sugar, fats, and salts. Now they go one step further. You're addicted to all of that. But now additionally, and I naively said to the former head of the Food and Drug Administration, Dr. David Kessler, isn't that illegal? And he smiled, he said, you don't know the way the Food and Drug Administration works. If it was an opiate, they'd be arrested immediately, the president of the company. But it's a synthetic opiate that we don't even know what it is. And by the way, if they do discover it and make it illegal, the next day they'll change the formula and it will no longer be illegal. Interesting, isn't it? How do they make so much money? Soft drinks and french fries, in depth. Every single day after school, three, four days a week, as I was growing up, I'd go to the soda fountain. Now, we used to have stores that had soda fountains in them back in the 50s. And we would get french fries, my best friend and I, french fries with ketchup and soda. And look at this. They like these little boys, because I was actually giving them, in the case of pop, 
a 1,200% profit on pop. It's water with massive amounts of sugar in it that your governments and my government, everyone seems to subsidize to keep you all shut up and dumbed down. The fries make, make it around 500% profit. Spuds, I mean, aren't spuds the cheapest thing you grow in Ireland? And how many of you know the very first food that they started to radioactively treat were spuds 75 years ago? Do you ever see on the side of a spud box not sproutable or not sprouting? They've been radiated for 75 years. Most of you weren't born 75 years ago. Did you know sugar suppresses the immune system? When you eat a big dose of sugar like a bottle of Coke or candy bar, you temporarily tap down your immune system ability to respond to challenges. So every time you take sugar, and this is ironic, so you get sick and you still haven't changed your patterns, what's the first thing you do? Eat sugar. That was my comfort food. I didn't feel good, I was unhappy in some way, what was the first thing I did? I ate a cake, I took sugar, I took something. And so when you need your immune system the most, you tend to destroy it the best. Isn't that really interesting? And so many of you said, oh, well, I don't eat sugar. Even if you gave up every form of processed sugar, and let's go through the list of processed sugar. What's the most notable? White sugar, but brown sugar is a processed sugar. Honey is a processed sugar. Maple syrup is a processed sugar. High fructose corn syrup is a processed sugar. The worst is agave syrup. It's actually worse for your body than high fructose corn syrup. Xylitol is the same. Usually coming from a birch tree, but now they use different kinds of carbohydrates to make this. Dextrose is that. So they take potatoes and they take the sugar out, that's what dextrose is. And out of all these sugars, what we now learn is the worst is fructose. Why? Because there's been massive studies done all over the world on fructose, because they choose to put that into your sodas, because it's cheaper than white soda, a soda, a white sugar, to put it. And now we know that fructose in the body, we've just learned this in the last 12 months, looks like fat and acts like fat in digestion. So that's why it smothers you along with stimulating those receptor sites, not only in cancer, but can you imagine what it does in diabetes? Can you imagine what it does in arthritis? Can you imagine what it does in viral diseases? When we did our initial studies over 30 years ago and finally concluded that we won't only stop sugars from cancer patients, but we're gonna stop it from every other patient, Viruses were much, 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 much more happy with sugar than even cancers. When we were in vitro, that means on a microscope in a petri dish, looked at this hundreds of times, when we would drop fructose, not white sugar, fructose onto that slide, and we watched viruses, rhino or retroviruses, it looked like wind behind a major fire going across the country of Ireland and wiping everything out in a split second. Bingo. Sugar is notorious for promoting weight gain, tooth decay, etc. Yet there is much more sinister role that it plays in sparking and enhancing every disease known to man. Now, we are saying to you loud and clear as scientists today, listen closely, that one of the greatest causes for every disease known to man today is the consumption of sugar. Again, either you could debate me or the next time I'm in Dublin, which will be, you can bring the top research scientists from Trinity, and let's have a panel discussion and debate. And I'd like that to be filmed by your national television program. Because this is definitive science now. This is no longer a few people who are on the pioneering edge of this. This is major universities doing the research showing us these things. Diseases linked to sugar consumption. Each of these maladies have been scientifically proven to be fed by all forms of sugar. ALS, Parkinson's, MS, Alzheimer's, HIV, another crazy thing. If I can't get people with AIDS off sugar or chronic fatigue system off sugar, forget it. This is killers. Fibromyalgia, Crohn's disease, asthma, candida, fungal or yeast problems, 
mental illness, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, 